Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews. This is a show where we review everything from the silent movie by Mel Brooks to the latest, greatest, craptastic Will Ferrell movie. I'm Jonathan Charney. He's James Stevens. Hello. And the man on our left-hand corner, the proof that necophilia is always an option, Ryan Preston. Hey. <laughs> and because Ryan Preston is having some technical difficulties, we instead put up a picture of a monkey freaking out. So, <laughs> much, much, much apologies for everybody having to stare at uh, Crazy Monkey. And this week, we did the James Pick, the movie I Come in Peace, also known internationally as Dark Angel. This movie was directed by Craig R. Baxley and is starring one of our in, most endearing movie stars, Dolph Lundgren. Dolphster. And, uh, James, would you like to introduce this movie? All right. Well, uh, this movie made in 1990. And it kind of shows it's 1990. But basically the plot summary of this one, <clears throat> you know, I, I didn't really like the plot summary on IMDb. I thought it was a little bit kind of cheesy. It's like three or four words. Uh, well, no, actually, no, it's pretty long uh, little essay this person wrote on it. Basically what this is is it's the normal renegade cop who – has his own version of the law to keep everything right and true in his own little world, running around doing his own thing. Uh, so it's like the working movie. on a drug sting. His par- d- drug sting. His partner gets killed because he goes to stop another crime. Everybody in that room gets slaughtered by this uh, drug dealing alien, <laughs> and uh, another alien shows up to kind of chase him, and they all go through some shenanigans. And, uh, really? Shenanigans? Yep, that's the, that's the word you drag out? Yes, I did. <laughs> wow. That was all homage to Ryan. Shenanigans. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and that's basically where this movie goes is, you know, kind of down that line of, you know, renegade cop trying to make everything right with the world. Um, now, that's basically the plot. There's been a bunch of movies about, like, Renegade Cop going on to his own little revenge scheme to make everything One of right. my favorite genres. Yeah, exactly. It's a total genre. So, I mean, I don't really put this movie so much in sci-fi as I do kind of cheesy action. Which is why I picked it, because I thought this is one of those pinnacle cheesy action movies. Um, now, I didn't want to get into too much of the rating. I wanted to see kind of... Somebody who didn't really remember this movie all that well. I wanted to pass it off to Ryan for him to start off with what he actually thought about this movie. Okay. Well, uh, to start off, um, like I said, I, I, one of my favorite genres, uh, just like kind of the buddy cop sort of thing. And this one, you get Dolph Lundgren, the Punisher, and then, uh, you know, looks like Lord Raiden battling it out <laughs> in a, uh, a intergalactic drug war. Going on, <laughs> I was I was actually thinking he looked like uh, one of the bastard children of uh, Siegfried and Roy. Uh, oh, that was good. I, I was I was really catching a uh, Christopher Lambert vibe off of him for a second, maybe a little Highlander. Okay, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I could I could go with that. Um, yeah, Dolph Lundgren playing just this 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 old detective. Uh, like you said, he's got his own version of the rule book. Uh, Jack Kane, you know, uh, rule book one oh one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, plays the uh, the plays that that cop that just look. I, I've been doing this so long. I, I I got my own way of doing shit. He's gone through forty two partners apparently, and he's going to be teamed up with another dude, special agent uh, Smith, Dipshit. I believe it was from <laughs> yeah from uh, from the FBI. It's and I think uh, it's, it was special agent Andwood. Yeah, something like that. He was something weird. Oh, Arwood. Arwood. There we go. Arwood. Arwood that's uh, right. Whatever. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, played by uh, this kid Brian Ben Ben, who never really had much life after horrible weird horrible last movies. name. Horrible last oh, name yeah. though, Ben Ben. You know what's a horrible last name? Uh, why it's a horrible last? Name? He ended up actually having his own TV show called the Brian Ben Ben Show. Are you kidding me? Really? Now, if right. your name was that and you had your own show, would you think of a clever name or would you use that one? Um, well, it's, anyway, so un- the point. it's so unbelievable that you would think that it was made up. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, right from from like 1998 to like 2000, I think I remember seeing. Wow. Um, yeah. Huh. Uh, anyway, th- this this movie was was just full of cross genre type of type of things. It 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 had a lot of I don't know really random type of sci fi things in it uh, going on. It was it was a cross between a a, a couple of different 
types of movies. I'm really losing my train of thought. I apologize. Yeah, you um, <laughs> the uh, the aliens in this cracked me up. Um, like I said, the first one looked like Christopher Lambert on steroids. Uh, the second one looked like Michael Bean from uh, from Terminator on steroids. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow, good one. Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so, uh, Dolph Lundgren and his new special agent partner who plays everything by the book, who's which is also one of my favorite types of things in this in this type of buddy cop genre. Um, no, this is the way we're supposed to be doing it. We gotta wait for backup. And then Dolph Lundgren shouts uh, very loudly, no time for backup. Yeah. Um, I, I'm instantly a fan of, of, of stuff like that, so it's 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 really hard for me to uh, to, to hate movies like this. <laughs> well, yeah, well, don't forget... Well, but then... Let's just say, well, oh, while he's doing that, the by the book partner somehow pulls out this humongous gun with a like forty four mag it looked a, like yeah with a rifle scope attached and starts shooting a car behind him yeah right in yeah. traffic oh yeah in in traffic not necessarily paying attention to to what's behind that car <laughs> or <laughs> behind that car <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. Uh, this this movie is, is is entirely full of cliches, but it's all the cliches that we we've come to kind of like. Yeah, exactly. You know, from from stuff like this, and then mixed in with some just god awful <laughs> sci fi shit. <laughs> I mean, laughable uh, kind of like like. Okay, I want to bring like into a, something. Now you brought up a good fact fact that this was a buddy cop genre. There's tons Correct. of these movies that are buddy cop genres. They're even still making them today. Thank you, Bruce Willis. Yeah, it's, it's, um, well, it's buddy cop meets Mutt and Jeff. I mean, yeah, but this one, right? Oh, absolutely. The, the thing I, I I always appreciated about this one versus all the other buddy cops is this mixes in its own original uh, a side plot along with the buddy cop. And that's this drug dealing alien and the creativity they came out with. <laughs> hold on. Let me finish my thought here. The creativity they came out with of pumping the person full of heroin and harvesting the endorphins. That's original. And that actually was kind of surprising in this movie because they took this whole genre and mixed in this whole, whole other plot line. That um, I don't know if they I, wanted I, to make sequels out of this one, like you know, Dolphy goes in space to go find these guys. No, that has to be the third one if it's an eighties <laughs> movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but and then they throw in kind of all these these new weird types of weapons, like the flying blade. I love the flying blade. Yeah, the flying blade was was interesting. The uh, the magnetic disc, yeah, if you will. Um, the guy's random little uh, uh, scorpion uh, hand thing. Well, that you know, was the, the get, the, the what part... I call the get over here spike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is the get, get over, over here spike. I I, um, I always thought that was weird. I mean, they 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 pump those people through a lot of heroin. I would have thought they would have died before you got a chance to do anything. Well, they did say they yeah, died of a heroin overdose. Not the not the spike through the skull. <laughs> Uh, now, now, what did you think of that? I mean, you haven't, you didn't okay. get there. You were running a rampant on the buddy cop, and you know the kind of okay. not really paying Check attention to out, surroundings. Guys. I got a great idea for a movie. It's drug dealers, but wait, from space. All right, Bill. That's how that went down. I guarantee it. <laughs> but you, you see what I'm saying, though. They totally took the buddy cop, and then they threw in this kind of interesting. I mean, there was right. thought. There yeah, was it, definite it thought to it. You're kind of, you're kind of seeing. I, I see your point. You're kind of seeing. You know, the 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 mix of the two genres. You know, the 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 what the fuck uh, kind of uh, attitude and and wonderment of what the hell's going on from the uh, from the buddy cop genre, looking at the sci-fi thing, and then the sci-fi crazy stuff kind of going on, almost in spite of the uh, of the the a story of the the buddy cop thing going on, and then they sort of meet at the end. Because the whole time I'm watching this buddy cop movie, and I'm almost forgetting about the alien shit that's going on until a guy ends up in the, in the backseat of his car bleeding sour cream and cottage cheese. <laughs> well, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, this shit just got real. And that I have this to kind shit of just got real. I'll, yeah. I'll agree with uh, that because that's, that's the one thing I don't think 
the alien is in a lot of this movie. No, he's really not. He's a sideline. No, That's what I'm a saying. Real. I mean, if, if, if it's a B story, if, if anything else. Yeah. Or I, uh, it is. almost a C story as opposed to a B story. I mean, it, it seems it's more like a device just to move the just to move the story along. Something that they right. can go to the next scene and the next scene. That, that's, exactly, that's exactly what it was. It was yeah. really, really chock full of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I I agree with you. Um, now a couple things that were a little bit confusing to me in this movie, and I guess we surely shouldn't pick this one apart on confusing, because I mean, if you really look at this movie, you're gonna find confusion everywhere. I mean, because oh, yeah. I mean, this is one of the more holy plot lines, but that's actually what these movies are from this basic time period. If you look at oh, the time period oh, yeah. of movies from like mm, beginning of the '80s all the way up to about '95. I mean, there right. was really no plot line in a lot of the action movies. None. No, but Why? I mean, that, that's some of my favorite mindless action movies that I that I that I can think of. Is actually, is you that hit the nail of, on that, the head right there. Era. You hit the nail right on the head. Mindless action movies. That's what they are. Well, I think that's the purpose. I think instead of to, a lot of today's movies, I think they were just the purpose was to blow crap up and have fun. I think it was really yeah. just about entertaining instead of trying to make a really good movie, which apparently Hollywood fails at consistently. Yeah, that's oh, absolutely. true. Absolutely. I mean, I still want to know what the heck the ammo was in those guns. Yeah, seriously. I, there, there is one thing I want to ask is when they're in that club in the first scene, you know, when his partner is killed. Okay. What's yeah. up with the kung fu roll? He does this half Jackie Chan monkey flip thing yeah, behind it. Well, if you watched table. him quite a bit, you kind of noticed that he was throwing in a lot of, you know, Van Damme moves going on in there. Yeah, he had his, he had his Chuck Norris action pants on, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, he totally did. And, I mean, the thing about this is, I mean, Dolph Lundgren, you never look at Dolphy movies for action. You don't watch them for, for I mean, well, I, think, I mean, you watch them for action. You don't really watch oh, them for acting. That's what I was trying to yeah, say. Yeah, I was going to say well, act, I got story. it backwards. A little bit of dyslexia. I think that's the there. only thing that I watch Dolph I mean, Lundgren movies for is action. He's a really smart guy. He really is. If you look him up, you can find out that he's like a total MIT grad. Has well, yeah, like he's a PhD. A, a Fulbright scholar, I think. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, biomedical engineer, if I'm not mistaken. I yeah. mean, how great of an actor do you think Hawking's would be if he tried? I mean, so really smart well, people. What I'm trying to I think mean, is how bad of a scientist Dolph Lundgren would have been if he would have stuck in that field. <laughs> you never, you never know. He might have done like an amazing job. He might have uh, given Hawking for a run for his money, you know. But he well, decided to go better, action. He might have accidentally cloned humans and crossbred them with monkeys and turned them all inside out, and you know. Oh, so they look like your picture then? They, they, Pretty much. <laughs> you should see that picture, man. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, the other thing is, yeah, you brought up the whole scene where he like bust into the whole, you know, uh, uh, club after after shooting a guy and knocking the other guy out in a in a liquor store robbery. Runs over there, and then this alien just slaughtered like six people, six very armed people, very armed yeah. people, and then he hears Dolph Lundgren coming and looks over and oh, I gotta get out of here <laughs> yeah wait a minute yeah, what? Exactly. are you scared of the Dolphster yeah <laughs> well, I mean, well he, he probably saw Ryan's favorite movie He-Man so oh jeez masters of the universe alright let's you know let's get it right <laughs> but anyway I mean yeah I mean this movie is definitely whole, holy it's definitely cheesy but the reason why I wanted to put this out there for any of you viewers who may have not grown up in the same time period that John, Ryan, and I did where there was tons of these movies out there. Another one that might go on my list is uh, uh, Big Trouble in Little China. These <laughs> movies are like the pinnacle of cheesy action movies. They're oh, funny. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a one step up from a, from a TV movie. Exactly. It, it, yeah, you know, it's, it's there for, for, for gratuitous uh, action and, 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 you know, very, very little plot. I love the... Uh, the uh, the love interest with the corner. Oh that was yeah, hilarious. oh yeah, the one that just starts beating him up. And think, who really answers the door in a bathrobe and high heels, except for a woman <laughs> that's a whore? Sorry. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm sure it was a common thing back in like the Mad Men days or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Another thing is, why is it always Christmas in '80s action movies? I don't know. It's kind of one of the same I thing. I mean, if you watch the old Bruce Willis, the Die Hards, it was like Christmas yeah, every Hards, time yeah. he did something. Yeah, it, it always seems <laughs> like that was the perfect time that some. Some mean bad guy decides to do something. I don't know. Weren't all the Home Alones around Christmas time? Yeah, actually. Yeah. The, the only thing, I, the only thing to kind of go back is a little. I just have a hard time calling this sci-fi. 
It's, I don't think it's sci-fi. I don't put it in sci-fi. I think it's no. Be, I, I don't think the, the the people who made this movie ever had. I don't think they ever saw a sci-fi movie. I think they might have just you know heard a couple of things about them and thought that it would be you know an, an interesting mix. Well, here's here's my question. It does ha- obviously have some sci-fi elements. I mean, it's very. I, I think the device to move the story along is the sci-fi part. Some alien... Well, of course. I know. mean, there was really no other storyline. I mean, they couldn't really very well do all the dirty, hairy move-alongs. I mean, So here's, here's, here's the question. What is the definition for us, for real flicks, is what is considered sci-fi? Uh, Does it have to have sci-fi elements? Does it have to be completely sci-fi? I think it would, needs to be futuristic or in space. <laughs> not not necessarily. Um, there, I mean, there's there's things that that sort of bridge the gap, you know, out of out of the the, the space genre in, in well, general. Well, give me a give me a example. Um, let's see. Well, okay, I'm I'm gonna actually I'll I'll, uh, I'll uh, uh, foreshadow my my pick for next week because uh, it's it's just a decent example. Uh, being John Malkovich. Why uh, that's gonna be considered sci-fi? I would consider that a sci-fi movie. How is that going to be considered sci-fi? Science fiction. I mean, it's 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 science fiction. It's it's something based in the in the kind of non-fantasy sort of like like there's some. Well, I don't know. It's, it's kind well, of hard I think, to describe the genre in itself. Not, um, not not to cut you off, but I think what you're saying is it's not. A uh, modern definition of science fiction is Star Trek. Is anything that's set in the future. Sci-fi could be anything in modern time that involves. Some sort of scientific thing, like uh, the fly, with Jeff Goldblum. Okay, well, well cons- oh, absolutely, yeah. That, I would consider the fly, like, Hollow right. Man. Um, I was even going to throw in like the Fifth Element. Oh, that's I think yeah, I, I think that's, that's futuristic sci-fi. sci-fi because that's not right. set on a different world. That's set here. I think that's sci-fi fantasy. Yeah, uh, I Starship do. Troopers. Again, that's set here. They move out and go into space. I mean, same with Fifth Element, but I, I'm not going to consider something like this a, a futuristic sci-fi. Could would you would you be willing to call it? Um, what about something that has loose sci-fi? Because this obviously has some sci-fi. This in it. is very loose sci-fi. I mean, very very thin. So it's an action movie with sci-fi elements, not a sci-fi yes. movie with action elements. Yes, exactly. Right. No, definitely. The, the definitely. baseline premise of this is more action than I would say. It has to have uh, more. Futuristic fantasy uh, alien um, elements to it, overlying tones than the action tones. Yeah. Does that make more sense, Ryan? Yeah, 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 definitely. So, I mean, being John Al- Malkovich is, I would put that more in drama comedy. Well, yeah, it is. It's a drama comedy. Sci- it's technically a sci-fi or, or sci-fi fantasy. Yeah, I would say fantasy. I wouldn't say sci-fi because, I mean, sci-fi to me is more of like he's got, like, random aliens running around in his head. Well, I don't no, want to well, get some, into any that, teasers. It generally people... kind of takes place in the, in the, in the future or, the, or, you know, something like that or, or kind of I, – I, it's – So the, the, the robot um, – the robot Robin Williams movie, I can't think of the name of it. Oh, uh, Millennium. Millennium Man, Man or something like that. You would consider that sci-fi? Instead of sure. fantasy, no, absolutely. So, oh. I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily always have to take place in the in, in space. I would say that's drama or, fantasy. Um, drama. I, I don't know. See, I, I I look at fantasy a lot more of like the uh, the you know swords the stuff and sorcery kind of thing. Yeah, sword and sorcery, that kind of stuff. You know. Okay, so like uh, um, the Sean Connery dragon movie. I can't think of the name of it right now. That's fantasy. Yeah, Dragonheart. Dragonheart. Dragon. Yeah, yeah, fantasy. Yeah, sure. that, I would fantasy. consider that fantasy. Yeah. Of course, I wouldn't consider that uh, sci-fi or anything. I mean, I would put that in the fantasy. Category. Yeah, sci- sci-fi. I I think I would I would qualify it as somebody taking you know images of the future or something like that and and trying to to sort of sort of uh, anything futuristic, whether it be. I man, this is this is a really hard well, genre about, to break down. Well, <laughs> how, well, how about um, anything that doesn't exist or we don't know about for example um some sort of technology you've got the fly independence yeah, day there's, yeah that's that's what i was going for or, some, or, some kind of or independent of, of look into the future as far as whether it be technology or yeah. or, or different worlds or okay, something yeah. like that because like something that doesn't exist that somebody's somebody's kind of making up for for fictional purposes so yeah okay, okay. so say like like independence day there's reality like independence day there's the aliens um right 
So, okay, then I, I agree with that. Do you? Ryan, you're, you're disappeared. I did that what? You, you went really quiet. Oh, sorry. You might want to bring your mic back up. Um, okay, I can see that. Because, I mean, this one, uh, the genre on IMDb is action, crime, drama, horror, sci-fi, thriller. I agree with, I disagree with a lot of those, actually. I would say this is action, crime, sci-fi. sci-fi. Yeah. I see no horror elements. Well, unless, horrible. I mean, the, the, horrible. The, yeah, the aliens looked really horrible. It's it's an action movie that happens to have an alien or two in it. Yeah. I To to, to, to kind of get more on the story, I, I always wonder what a lot of the 80s movies always have to have this scientist, that, that weird guy. Oh, I liked him. He I was the he best was... actor in the whole movie. I agree, but I just want to know, like... The scientist, Ryan? The coffee-drinking scientist? Um, that, yeah, that was, um... That was the best uh, actor of the whole movie. I remember that guy from something, and I, can, I can't yeah, remember I exactly it what it was. Um, but yeah, the, the psycho way strung out, uh, inventing his own coffee scientist. Yeah, Bruce the Scientist. Yeah, his name was, uh... Mark, uh... Mark Lowenthat? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I liked him. I mean, he was the he he was chasing down the uh, speed with coffee. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and oddly oddly enough, I actually really agree with James. I think he was the best actor in the entire movie because he fit the role. Everything he was doing, even even though the way his tales his, from the crypt, Roseanne. Yeah, I thought the guy did a really good job. Yeah, he's got a quite a quite a um, large. Uh, Repertoire. He was in uh, Sledgehammer, Twenty One Jump Street, um, Roseanne, Tales from the Crypt. Well, shoot. I mean, those those could qualify as. I mean, shoot. Newsies. Everybody did those uh, shows yeah. back in the day. Anyway, well, maybe not Sledgehammer. That was like a season and a half. Anyway, um, yeah, he he's a very interesting character. Um, I, like John said, as far as what he was going for, he hit it nail on the head. Yeah, it was it was the one comic relief in the in the movie, you know, that that they really needed. <laughs> yeah, I think you know if like you know trying to watch this as I would back in the eighties, I, I I agree. This movie, I think this movie took itself a little too seriously at points. Um, it, it's certain parts, yeah. I, um, I but think then it it, it, it sort of it. I think it. Uh, you you kind of get yourself out of the mindset of like oh is this movie taking itself seriously or is it not and then you see the 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 real cliche stuff you know like the uh, the police chief yelling at uh, Dolph Lundgren for you know being a reckless asshole yeah uh, you're gonna go a through partner. another partner yeah 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 <laughs> yeah um the the, uh, the other part I thought was was. I thought was was kind of very one dimensional in this movie was the the FBI presence not the not his new partner but. There's another very weird side side plot about what the FBI is trying to protect the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that whole thing where they were um, supposedly taking the weapons and stashing them, and yeah, I I yeah. didn't get the point of that. I didn't think it moved the story at all. I thought the only reason it was there was to try to give credence to the special uh, special agent Arwood. Yeah, that was the only thing that I saw for it too. I mean. Just basically moving the plot along on him, just kind of saying, "Well, he's I, I think it was yeah, it was, it was a payoff for the um, for the whole, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to teach you how to do things not by the book, and you know, you're you're a by the book, and this is the the you know, this is my way of doing things, the no time for backup way, and I think it was sort of a payoff to to that yeah. uh, that story. Yeah, uh, Dolph Lundgren through the whole, especially when that that he met Arwood. His comment was, "How do you do things?" The guy said, "By the book," and the the, the Arwood guy had asked uh, Detective Jack Kane, "How do you do stuff?" And he said, uh, with, "With by gut, right by instinct." Yeah, instinct. Yeah. By so instinct. I, I think that was really I think that was the payoff for saying that you can't always depend on the book. I mean, the atypical eighties uh, diehard. Yeah. A, no uh, time actually, for backup. Yeah, philosophy. <laughs> and uh, just some of the things in this weird to pick out things that I thought was weird was as James pointed out they were in the crime scene of the bar and the the cops were going to the bathroom oh yeah going to the bathroom and smoking yeah <laughs> yeah back in the days when you could smoke in a crime scene yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, that was kind of interesting to me i'm just like really you're gonna contaminate the crime scene by taking a piss in hey, the bathroom I, you know what that's that's why these movies are so much fucking fun to me though is is just you you watch them once and you're like wow what the hell is going on here you watch it again and you just you you almost love picking out those little moments like is this oh, guy doing this yeah. is this guy doing that why is he bleeding sour cream 
It's like the, the one thing that was really obvious is he kept switching guns. In one cut, he'd have like a Beretta 92F, and the next yep. cut, the same spot, he'd have a completely different gun. Yeah. Right. I mean, you would yep. th you would think that the guy who ever did the propping for that would notice that, hey, we uh, used insert gun here instead of... Well, I think I bet you Dolph was having a little bit of fun, just like grabbing random guns. Totally, <laughs> but it's not as bad I, as shoot, the I was. I think he never minds what gun. He's just, just somebody give me a gun. Yeah. Um, I, I loved the uh, the aliens gun. I, I was trying to figure out if it was the uh, the the world's smallest grenade launcher or just really really powerful incendiary rounds. Why well, did oh, the guns? You I, mean, I, I wish I, I wish I wrote it down. I found a website. M nine oh nine fifty. Yeah, something like that. There, there's yeah. a website I found. It's like, you know how there's IMD dot dot IMD B. This one's uh, basically it's a website for all movie guns. If ooh nice. Um, I'll forward you the link. Um, and that gun was actually used first by Sylvester Stallone in one of his movies. Yeah, and this one's a real gun, but it was modified with a shorter That's barrel, right. some plastic shrouding. Yeah. Now, okay, was it me or was it? Did you guys kind of find it interesting that both aliens had the same type of gun? I was wondering that too. You know, I hey, mean, it's the black market. You know, intergalactic I, black market. What do you expect? Well, well one of them was a of cop. Them, yeah, one of them was a cop. Well, where do you think we, you know, criminals around here get a lot of their guns from? I you understand know, I mean, that, but I mean, the bad alien has this flying blade weapon, and then he's also got a backup exploding round gun. Yeah, and I was thinking they were incendiary rounds with uh, plastic, uh, plastic explosive in the in the bullet. Yeah, yeah. So that when it goes on contact, it explodes. Okay, kind of. And a, then how do you have a sorry. gun like that and then suck so bad at aiming? You know oh, I, mean? I know. It, well, because it, it had so much kick, he couldn't hold it right to shoot it. Yeah. He went to the school of bad guys. Yeah, I. Well, it's just like Dolph Lundgren in one scene. He's holding his gun with one hand, while gripping his forearm. Not the oh, gun. Oh, bad! I hate that. Not not standard shooting. If 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 you actually learn to shoot, one of the ways they teach you to shoot, you hold the gun like this. Yeah, you 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 grip your other hand. And you, yeah. you squeeze it into yourself, and you don't. And you that's don't, what you push You're not it steady and you pull. shit by holding your wrist. Yeah, so he's going that or going one-handed cowboy style, and it's just like seriously, dude. You know, it, it's just that's one of the reasons I love '80s movies because the way they do guns, like uh, like the unlimited cheat. You know how they never change right. magazines, never rack the slide, right? Until it's it's until it's prudent to the plot. Like you yeah. know, oh, we only need one clear shot. Oh, you're out of ammo. I I don't know. I don't know if you, you noticed. Exactly. You're out of ammo. Yeah. Well, he would have been out of ammo 17 frames ago. Right. Um. The other thing I was going to mention that I was talking to James about is when the, the bad guys were breaking into the the police vault to get the heroin. How did they get all that heroin into that little briefcase? Yeah, that was a lot of H. Well, now, my my little catch on the flaw of that one is that the bags that he grabbed inside the evidence vault were smaller than the bags that were actually in the briefcase when they delivered them. I know. Did you catch that one? That was an interesting I just love the guy that picked up the bag and smelled it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy, you're that good. Heck, yeah, man. He's a drug-sniffing guy. <laughs> that smells like good H to me. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I was rubbing that all over my ass. Ooh, I could have done without that. <laughs> I uh, um, Yeah, and did the alien have a heroin tracker or what? Yeah, he kept showing up at the white boys. Yeah, he kept showing up where all the heroin was. I love his little uh, quarterback uh, wrist um, uh, wrist uh, uh, protector thing with the, with all of his drugs in it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. His little fanny pack. Yeah, his little fanny <laughs> drug pack. Sorry for all you South Africans out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> over overall, um, I, I I liked the movie. I mean, I'm obvious. I'm a sucker for an entertaining movie, no matter what it is. Right. Um, and since this is '80s, I think it's a little closer to my heart. Um, it's I, 90, 1990. It's 89, Get 90. Get it right. Well, here, here's the thing. It's made 1990, but it's so close to the 80s that it has an 80s feel. Well, you it, could yeah, almost... no, nobody, nobody knew what the 90s was going to bring yet. Uh, that 1990 is still the 80s. Yeah, I mean, it's just movie-wise. Um, well, okay, if it makes you guys feel any better, the movie was probably filmed in 89. Sure, but I'm, I'm saying and then it was released in of the influence of the 80s and none of the influence of the 90s yet. That movie is an 80s movie. 
<clears throat> I'll let you me. have it. I, you're right. I let you guys have that one. I, I thought it was an 88, 89 when I picked it, and then I looked it up. Hey, and yeah, said, you'd, you'd think so. Yeah. The soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. Over, yeah. Overall, um, I, overall, I give this movie a three. I, I enjoy the movie. It's not worth a four or even a f- It'll never get a five, not from me at least. Um, Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I enjoy the movie because it has, just for at least the entertainment value, and, and I, for me, movies at least have to be entertaining, is it has action scenes, has some really bad dubbing we can laugh about. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Random crap being blown up, and it's it has Dolph Lundgren. I mean, it, it, if, you like, <laughs> if you like bad movies, Dolph Lundgren has done a lot, but they don't, most of his movies are, are, don't take themselves too seriously. Yeah, that's true. That, and um, they shouldn't. And this movie, you know, I don't think it was just about really having fun. At least that's what it seemed to me. So overall, I give this movie a three. What about yourself, James, since this was your pick for this well, movie? Well, even though this is my pick, it only does get a two. And Mr. Mean. I know. Hey, it was my pick, man. Let me have it. Um, well, 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 hold on. To, to, to kind of preference this, James was really excited when he got here this after, this morning to like, you ready to watch this movie? It's like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And like, there's a reason why I was excited because this is what I wanted to do with this show. But you This make- really was. Hold on, let me finish my thought here. This is a bad <laughs> movie, okay? There, there's, whole, there's poor acting. There's poor plot summary. There's really nothing to like about this movie except the fact that, like Ryan said, it's a no-brainer sit back, relax, and just enjoy the laughability of this movie. That's what yeah. this movie is a pinnacle of. That's what this movie really demonstrates. And that's why I picked this movie is because this is what I wanted to do with the show. I want to get the viewers to get out there and to watch movies that they normally would never decide to watch. And this is one of those movies that a lot of people out there probably wouldn't even give a second thought. They're going through the movie store. They see something like the Dark Angel. They pick it up. They look at it. They read it and then put it back on the shelf. I want people to be willing to step out of their comfort zone and watch a movie like this. Get over yourself. Sit back and enjoy it. I just right. uh, yeah. I just and I love the even fact so despite all of that, I can't give this movie a high rating because of the fact of how bad it is. So I'm going to be honest. I picked this movie. I was excited to get on here and rate this movie and discuss it. But it only gets a two. That's my thing. I enjoy it. Okay. It's one of those movies that I will always say, hey, you know, watch this movie. Get over yourself. Enjoy a crappy movie. Yeah, see, I'll, I'll agree with that. I mean, ev- you know, everybody has these movies that are obviously bad, but you really enjoy them. Yeah. Yeah, um, so that's why Masters I put of the universe. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I, 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 oh my right. gosh. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> unfortunately, I think I'm worse. I happen to really enjoy the first Beastmaster. <laughs> um, so, all right. What about yourself, Ryan? What did you? What's um, your rating? I, I I agree with James. I, I love I love watching movies that kind of kind of pull you out of the stuff that you usually watch. Um, if you only watch the stuff that you're into, you're never really gonna gonna kind of expand you're never gonna know what's good or what's not if you've never seen anything exactly. bad so you almost have to be able to take the bad with the good exactly. and i know it sounds counter, kind of counterintuitive like hey watch a bad movie every now and again but this is this is one of those types of movies that people did, did like the hipster people make parties out of they'll invite 20 people to their house and say hey we're gonna watch a really shitty movie yeah and you got you know two schools of thought of it you know the, the stupid people are gonna sit there and 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 you know look at the bright colors in the action and, and think this is kind of cool um, and then the, they're going to wonder why all the smart people are laughing at it so damn much, <laughs> because it's just it's just it's it's a it's a comedy of a serious movie. You know what I mean? It, it, but it was it was almost self aware enough to where you it was it was kind of a, a tip of the hat to a couple of genres. Yeah. Uh, you know, it had a lot of the the really obligatory lines like the no time for backup kind of things. <laughs> um, there's absolutely no way I can give this any more than a two just because wow. it's a bad movie, but that doesn't mean that I don't like watching bad movies. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. I like that to be very, very clear, just because I, I would not sit here and try to defend it as a, as a piece of good cinema doesn't mean <laughs> that I don't like the shit out of this type of stuff. That is, yeah, I mean, that's something I think Ryan, James, and I both in- incredibly agree on, is it's just, we yeah. all love movies. And yeah. it, it doesn't matter. And I like weird stuff and, and out there things and, 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 you know, like I'm into the character studies, you know, the real simple stuff too, but but this is the kind of things that for mindless entertainment, you, you almost can't get any better. Yeah. yeah. 
And I think that's 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 the one thing that that really irks me about some of these award shows is <laughs> they pick movies that yeah they're, they're great cinematography, but uh, uh, do I think they should win? No, because there's no. a lot more movies that I enjoyed a lot more that were honestly deserve the award more just because right bad movies on some of them they actually make you think going wow this got approved you yeah you, know, you deserve an award just for getting right. bad movies passed yeah yeah seriously just for getting this made you you deserve a lifetime achievement award yeah i mean whoever decided to let jack and jill get made should definitely win an emmy oh jesus well i mean shoot that's just uh, again the bankability of stupid people is 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 is, is really unrivaled it that's People see familiar and they immediately jump right on top of it. And it's not a good thing. If you only look at what's familiar, if you only listen to music that's familiar, you're, you're never going to be able to expand your your, your, your rep- repertoire. I'm sorry to use that douchebaggy word. Um, <laughs> you, you're, really, you're never going to expand your, your, your mind on these, on these types of things. Uh, you, you have to be able to, to get out and listen to things that, that might not be what you normally do just just so you even if if it's only to appreciate the things that you actually like you yeah know? you know the one thing i've been telling a lot of people is because out of the three of us i've probably seen the worst of the worst movies yeah you you watch stuff that even i don't want to see uh, i watch movies that probably make ryan and john cringe at just me saying what movies i've seen and that's kind of saying something because Ryan and I used to have a little thing of like who's seen worse movies, right? Yeah, and I think I, at a certain point I definitely had to concede the uh, yeah. You, title. you tipped your hat to me. Um, yeah, and my belief in that is you have to go through a lot of shit to find gold. You really oh, do. I mean, you but, really but look, do. You have to dig through a lot of different things to find movies that would be considered gold. And yeah, well, you and I used to go and track down just a bunch of movies, you know, just just kind of standing yeah. at the video store, walking down the aisles, and we, look, we we you read the back of a movie, you you think it sounded interesting, you take it home. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's going to be interesting. <laughs> no, and it just doesn't, and it certainly does not like, mean that you're going to find good actors, good good plot line. Not, but, but you know, like you. You know, you see a couple of character actors in something that you want to see. You you know, it might tip you towards towards renting it or, or getting it or something like that or downloading it. You take it home and it's terrible, but then you you find something that you haven't seen that's good, and it, it you just yeah you know it's the diamonds in the rough you know yes, that you exactly. have to search for. So um, next week is your pick, Ryan. Um, what's your pick going to be? I mean, you, you already said it, but I want to read it. I already said it, but, but I, I want to you know preface it a little bit because I, I love I love weird movies. I love strange takes on things. Um, you obviously didn't uh, like my super pick. Uh, fuck you guys. But uh, <laughs> but no, no I, I, never I, said I love I, I love strange. It. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love strange movies. I um, you know what I independent type of stuff. You know the weird cult things. Um, are the ones that I, 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 I really end up liking after a while. Uh, so being John Malkovich is definitely falling in the genre of, of uh, bizarre and, and surreal, um, almost absurdist uh, to the, you know, to certain people. Um, James, have you seen this movie yet? Yes, I have. I watched okay. it when it came out. I, however, have not. So this is going to be my first time seeing it. I haven't watched I'm, it since I'm it came out. To hearing, I'm looking forward to hearing a fresh opinion on it because I, I'm... I, I was a fan of this movie, maybe about the second time that I saw it. But it, it was one of those that after you, after I saw it the second time, it was like, why didn't I instantly love this movie? This is it's it's just kind of a brilliant, brilliant little story um, with a couple of just really, really out there ideas. Well, there could be. Uh, really out there ideas. Well, it, but then it. the characters are are completely amazing, and just the concept alone. Is 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 really really worth checking this out? So I'm really uh, interested to seeing what you guys have to say about it. Okay. Well, it could be um, just to, to kind of wrap it up here. It could be one of those movies that I've I've watched. You know, the the first time you see it, didn't like it. It takes a couple of times, but by the third or fourth viewing, you're like, I've got to buy this movie. Right. No, absolutely. And 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 just to give you uh, and and everybody out there kind of a, a a quick little thing. It's basically a guy finds a way to become John Malkovich the actor for about 15 minutes at a time and i'll leave it at that just as an entry um because (laughs) there's a a lot of oh it is 
but if that doesn't make you want to see the damn movie, I don't know what will. Uh, so, I gave it a three. James and Ryan it both gave it a two. And for for and for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Necrophilia Preston. See you next week. Jesus, hope my mom doesn't watch this. <laughs> this episode of Old Guy Tech TV is brought to you by Ward's Automotive. Specializing in Banks Power and Pack Brake. Servicing your car or truck and specializing in diesel engines. Over 30 years of service located in Diamond Springs, California. Give them a call at 530-626-5588.